I have mixed feelings about the fact that I did this, but um, yeah, girl made her own hat out of Delicio pizza boxes. <laughs> Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. I'm Wendy and this is Can She DIY It? It's a series where I find stuff on the internet and see if I can make it myself, documenting the process so that you can make it too. Today is a special looking fancy type of video. If you've got prom, somewhere where you wanna make a statement, you know, dress to impress, this one's for you. I gathered up some of the most major red carpet moments that we've seen this year so far and have put together some DIY ideas for you and to help me pull it all together I did reach out to Fitzroy Rentals who supplied all of the beautiful dresses that you're going to see in this video. If you've never heard of Fitzroy Rentals they have a super easy rental process. You can shop in store or online, you can borrow for four or eight days and their dresses are not just what you would wear to a formal event they also have really great selection for just like the good looking occasion. From a consumerism standpoint, you really do get to spend less and reduce waste. Some of the dresses that you can rent there are like nearly a thousand dollars, but you can rent them for a hundred to hundred fifty dollars for an event. And then it goes back, they clean it, they get it ready for the next person to enjoy it. To me, it has a lot of benefits. If you have a formal event coming up, I really encourage you to see if there's a dress rental service in your city. Fitzroy Rentals specifically is just in Canada, but if you follow them on Instagram at Fitzroy Rentals, I'm sure they will let you know when they're available elsewhere. I'll probably pop back in here to like help introduce each new one, and then I'll see you at the end too. First up, I just took a DNA test. Turns out I'm 100% that girl who showed you how to make a teeny tiny Valentino bag. This is the one that Lizzo wore, held, like pinched, is that the right way to put it? To the AMAs this year, the supplies that I started with were white faux leather, firm interfacing, a black marker that is not a Sharpie, gold jump rings, a gold charm, mine came from an earring, a white paint marker, and finally, shrinky dink. Okay, in advance, I have done some prep already. So I've cut out these little pieces of pretty firm interfacing. Mine is fusible, but I, from personal experience have not found it to be very sticky. So I don't think that matters that much. You can just use glue. The first thing I'm gonna do is glue these pieces down onto the white leather and cut out the shape. This little rectangle is going to form the front of the bag and this taller rectangle is gonna be the back which also folds over to the front flap. Yesterday, using this same method, I made this little thing which is gonna become the bag strap. And then I also cut an extra little skinny piece, which is going to become the bag loop. The last shape that I need to cut out from the faux leather is this piece right here. I will put all the dimensions in the description. What I'm going to do with this piece is I'm going to fold it in half with the wrong sides touching. And we are going to do the absolute tiniest stitch along the edge. Here is that stitch, nice and thin, along the top fold. With that third piece that I just folded and sewed over, I'm gonna sew all of these together into one bag. I started at the bottom and I did one stitch curving up this side and then one stitch curving up the other. So now it is attached to this wall piece. There was a lot of little like tying of tiny knots. Whenever you're trying to make little fine goods, you want to hand tie the knots instead of letting the machine do the back and forth. Now, we're going to sew this back piece with the exact same method to the back side. So the body of the bag is almost done. Here are the walls all sewn up. I added a little snap closure and I'm going to be cutting into the top so that I can add the two uh, loops to make the handle. I had colored the sides using a black calligraphy marker. I tried using a Sharpie, but it caused bleeding into the white, which was no bueno. I see the bag. And I'm gonna go ahead and cut a little slit into those places that I had marked. So far, I feel like I have put more effort into this than I did even in my own prom outfit. Where I grew up, prom is not like a super huge deal. I'm pretty sure my dress cost 80 bucks. There was one other girl wearing the exact same dress as me. She did have like a really different body shape. So it took people a while to realize it was the same dress. So I kind of like got away with that one. 
With all of these jump rings, I use the pliers to open them up. If you like it, then you should put a ring on it. And then sliding on the tiny tab, all of that gets inserted into the slit that I cut in the bag. It comes out from the inside and that gets you the two loops that the strap can attach to. Here is one of the loops after coming out. Then the jump rings just need two more jump rings each and the strap I glued to the outermost ring. To get the Valentino logo, I blew up a picture on my computer and then traced this design. The Shrinky Dink packaging looks like this and it says that it shrinks to one third of its original size. So I just tried to draw this three times the size that I wanted. It's a thin plastic, so it's easy to draw and easy to cut into the desired shape. I followed the instructions for baking, watched them shrink in a super satisfying way, and then afterwards I thought they looked really slick, so I did add some matte nail polish to one of them to see if that would make it better. It did not, so I just ended up gluing on the other one. Always have a backup plan. Next up, reporting from the red carpet, it is Billie Eilish in head to toe Gucci. I think she's really been gravitating towards this type of silhouette for formal events, but specifically from this outfit, I wanted to make the face mask. I think it really completes the look, also gives me an excuse to try out bedazzling, so let's do it. The supplies I started with were white tulle, some white elastic, crystals in two sizes, and a hot fix tulle. Okay, there's a couple of different ways you could tackle this. Like you can take the tool and just start like putting it on your face to see where it fits. I have been watching Next in Fashion on Netflix and it's reminded me of the importance of pattern drafting before you make the final product. So yeah, know what? We made a mock-up. You should use a material that is relatively rigid so it's a lot easier to work with than like the final tool which can be a little bit chaotic. It has been pinched and folded on all sides so that it fits my face. From this, a paper pattern got drafted. And now we're going to cut out two layers of tool using this pattern. The shape is cut out. I don't want to touch it because I just don't want to disturb it. Okay, the first thing I'm going to do is lock these two layers together so that I don't lose track of them. I'm just going to do one big long straight stitch all the way around. There's the finished shape. Ah. On the pattern, there are three darts in total that I'm trying to hit. There's one big dart here on the side. Then there's one small dart above it and one small dart below it. And I will put a picture of this in the description so that you can see where we put these darts. So I'm just gonna mark these darts onto the tool, sew them in with a straight stitch. Now it's not just like chaotic tool around my face, but the darts help everything to have a specific place. I've left enough fabric on the side so that we can tuck it over and create a channel. And inside that channel, we're gonna add the elastic. I want the edge to look real fancy. So in order to do that, I am doing a rolled hem. And you see, it just comes out super thin. Practice makes perfect. Last time I used that foot, I like lost sleep because. Make your life easier, they said. Here's the rolled hem, my sweet daughter. I'm gonna read about this in the YouTube comments, that's for sure. And today, I just used it like we were old friends. Wait, that doesn't make any sense. I don't use friends. Nestle the elastic into the gap and fold the edge over so that now the elastic's caught inside. We're just gonna do a straight stitch. So yeah, it can still slide freely, tying them together like so. Bring it across, great. I think it's a little bit too tight because this one is now like halfway across my cheek. Let's come on over to the real side. 
We want just two G's to fit and then almost a full diamond. And that's how I use my laptop as a light table. It's lit. I've got the mask taped down to the logo design so that it stays in place while I work. Crystals. Um, so screw in the appropriate size tip when the tool is cold. I did that. Plug it in, push on. Tool should be hot in two to three minutes. Place them in the desired position. Apply the hot tip over the rhinestone for five to 10 seconds. That's quick. Oh man, I should have gotten smaller crystals. My G's don't look like G's. Um. You say I'm the only one you would never be without. I found you're the only one I've ever seen. Okay, I am a little still regretful that I didn't get to make it all the way to Gucci. So we have gone and picked up the tinier crystal that was required and we've made a few extra updates. I've got the smallest attachment on the hot tool and now my design is under glass and hopefully that will not result in this like tearing of paper situation. There she is, Gucci! Don't come for me, please. I'm gonna work on this, and by the time this video goes up, I will aim to have a photo of this on my Instagram very shortly, so you can see how it looks in the end. All right, when it comes to red carpet fashion, obviously, I have to give this Billy Porter look a try. This is what he wore to the Grammys. The memes echoed all week long. The hat opened and closed through a remote control held by Billy Porter's nearby stylist. I'm gonna give you like a simpleton version. The supplies that I started with were cardboard, a lot of it, and I promise I'm not sponsored by Delicio. Sequin fabric, this reversible effect is optional. Beaded fringe, and finally, a bunch of random things from the dollar store or the hardware store. Here I'm not even showing all the funky little supplies I ended up using to pull this together, so just, just wait and see. First up, you should have some kind of hat. So this is a hat that I think matched the shape very closely. Ideally a more cylindrical flat top with a flat brim. I tried really hard to find a hat in like a thrift store or something that could work. I could not, so <laughs> I have mixed feelings about the fact that I did this, but um, yeah, girl made her own hat out of Delicio pizza bucks. <laughs> So the first step I wrote was make a hat. I did that. Next, we got this red sequin sitch. What we're gonna do is cut out a piece that covers the top, the sides, and the brim. I gotta make sure all the sequins are facing the same direction so that it looks a little bit more professional. And to help me with that, I was gonna use spray adhesive, which I have some experience with, but um, I was only able to get my hands on Power, power glue, glue stick. stick. It's like such a weird thing to have experience on. But from my experience on gluing down reversible sequin, you do not want to stretch the fabric. It will make flipping the sequins impossible. You just wanna lay it on gently. Okay, so here's the top piece glued on. And then this wall, I just applied some E6000 all the way along the top and then did power glue along the bottom edge and I had to like cut these apart so that it would splay evenly all the way around and now this one is gonna flip and go right here. I feel like at this point it is important to come clean. I had pre-scheduled to have my editor and a friend who's a photographer come to shoot this finished hat and by the time they came, 
this hat was not done. So any of you with a keen eye might have even noticed in the photos I'm posting on Instagram, it only has the outer rim, but it doesn't have the opening and closing doors. This is where we're at now. Truth be completely told, this trim is literally being held on by safety pins right now. And the bottom had that loose hanging fabric. So I just taped it down with packaging tape. Oh, that was desperate. But enough of that, onto the thing that we're all here for, the moving part of the hat. So this is the apparatus that Dan did for me. You'll recognize this straw hoop. It came from that flying disc. Very handy. Now these black pucks right here, there's two of them. And each one is one of those things that you attach to your waistband and then on the other end you attach like keys or an access pass and the whole thing is like spring loaded. He taped two of these zip ties but then he left a few skinny skinny little gaps and in those teeny tiny gaps he had periodic silver hoops along it being held all together using black tape and that gets us this a zip tie attached to the straw with silver hoops the one last modification he did was put a magnet at the end of each of these zip ties so that they could be clipped to each other that's what dan did in his way of trying to support me while i felt really tired and discouraged from this hat I really wanted to impress you guys and it doesn't always work out exactly as I dreamed. Anyways, this plus this plus the last bit of fringe that has not been attached to anything yet. Time to assemble. I have one piece of tape here holding the ring and I have a whole bunch of tape along the back. Okay. Here it is closed in the front. All that's left now is I think I'm just going to glue the fringe to this black bar. After that's done, I'll show you how it looks and how it works. I wanted to shine a light on how Ariana Grande wore three different dresses to the Grammys, but all three of them were paired with opera gloves. Just a warning though, in this section, I will sometimes call them elbow length gloves. Please forgive me if you're like a real stickler for glove terminology. For this one, the shortest of all supplies list, you will need pretty stretch fabric and not as pretty stretch fabric. So I did ask my assistant to make one glove as a test run, and now I'm gonna show you how it got done. I know at a basic level, you could just do like two halves, join them together, uh, top and bottom, but we're trying to look fancy out here. Gloves that look a little nicer have a separate attachment for the thumb that rests closer to the front, the palm of your hand. So I found a glove template online that I thought was pretty easy, so I will link it in the description for you. We followed it and cut out a first glove. This one was too big. In a stretch fabric, you want a pretty snug fit. We then shrank the glove down one whole size, which is now too small. Finally, feeling like a little Goldilocks in the three bear situation. We made a pattern that fit perfectly. Then we also measured the length from here to like the desired ending point on the arm. And, ooh, and what we ended up with was this pattern. This is the thumb hole. This is what the thumb pattern piece looks like. It looks like a giant pair of lips. And here we are ready to go. This is the hand piece. This is that thumb piece. And then to make the fingers 3D tubes, these little pieces, they bridge in between every single one of these dips. It's actually pretty cool. We're gonna start with sewing these gussets right sides to, such a fancy word, to these fingers. This is the index finger. This little 
gusset is the word that this website is using is now sewn on between the index and the third so now i'm going to repeat that sewing a piece between the third and the fourth and sewing a piece between the fourth and the pinky i gotta sew this right sides together and it's just along this top curve and down to over here ah. <laughs> This needs to get sewn right here. I'm just gonna pin this right sides together as best I can all the way around and sew with a straight stitch. I will fold the whole thing in half, right sides together and just do straight stitch all along the entire arm and then around. Also switch to zigzag stitch once you're sewing in the direction of the stretch. The seam was really tight, so I got a little bit of a hole. I'm just gonna go in and fix those and hem this bottom with just a simple one turn over and then I'll show you how it looks. People tell me that I'm crazy, I tell them that's exactly it I've got reasons for my absence People tell me that I'll burn out I tell them I'm not like the rest But if I'm really being honest and you Hello, I promised I would show the finished product There's like a little bit of weight issue here on the straws But it's closed alright and looks relatively seamless <laughs> I had a lot of fun making all of these. I really hope you enjoyed watching too. I'm super intrigued to find out from the comments which one of these you think was your favorite. There's links in the description if you wanna check out Fitzroy Rentals. They provided every single one of the dresses. There will be lots of pictures of these finished outfits on my Instagram, at with Wendy. You can subscribe, you can hit the bell notification, and I'll see you all next time. Hey, hey.